a different paper. He originally asked him to present his paper. No. <laughs> we had a paper together. He was going to present a different paper. This doesn't uh, fit uh, perfectly into this session, but it has language models and generative AI, but it's not specifically about creativity or too much generation itself. Uh, it's lucky, I, I first uh, heard from him about 24 hours ago, but it's lucky that I have the slides for another presentation next week. Now that presentation is 15 minutes long, so I just decided to keep the slides and talk twice as fast. But I'm sorry, we are going to talk about uh, just kidding, of course, I'm going to just skip some slides, but the, the idea here is we are going to do market research. Um, this is my model of marketing. You have the brands there, you have uh, a real representation of the brain, and then this is the outcome, the behavior. Now, of course, there's a lot of analytics that looks at the behavior and the purchases and whatnot, and it's very structured and nice data, but of course, marketing historically is very interested in what's going on in the middle, and one of the tools, um, today's language, you could call it an embedding, but of course, uh, we have been calling these perceptual maps, it's essentially putting all the information in your brain about brands onto a 2D map. And what we're trying to see if we can use language models to do this um, without or just uh, reducing the, the human respondents. So normally this is done by a service, right? So how do you do it? Well, you ask people, there's different ways to do it, but the simplest possible way is just to ask people how similar they think different brands are. So you can ask for every single pair here, a lot of pairs, but then you could just take the averages and then you create this big matrix and then you do some kind of uh, you know, embedding or dimensional introduction exercise to put it on the map. Uh, so this would be a sample question, so to tell how similar are these two car brands. Of course, there's a lot of, a lot of pairs, so you can't even ask all of the pairs from the same respondent if you don't want them to go crazy. I think they are not allowed to do. Um, so uh, lots of problems, of course, with human, human data in general and market research, but specifically in perceptual maps, expensive. How do you exactly ask the question? Right? Uh, the results can be inconsistent depending on who the, who the respondent uh, uh, groups are. And they're all different, right? They're all a little bit different. Um, and, that, and that is kind of all of these can be, to some extent, addressed by AI uh, and language models, uh, but of course not perfectly. I mean, the prompts matter, how do you ask the question matters. Uh, there is, uh, you know, some disagreement on what a language model does. Is it supposed to kind of be a single entity that gives you random answers, or is it kind of supposed to go into different modes and simulating random people and give an answer based on that? Uh, but what we are trying to do is see how replacing the human respondent in this exercise works in general. Um, so as you think about natural language processing, uh, for a long time people treated these two things separately, but of course large language models are very good at both. And unlike the kind of the, this, most of the session, we are not that much interested in the generative features of it but we are more interested in the understanding features of it. So the way we think about it is that these language models basically take the entire internet, um, and we are just in a little slice of that, and we are interested in the understanding of that slice of information. So we are essentially trying to see how the information extracted from language models, um, language models as is, we are not refining, we are not really doing anything to them, how that information extracted compares to what human respondents would give us. Now, this actually seems like a really simple idea, and then uh, these days it, it, it is. We started this in 2020, so uh, at that time nobody knew what uh, GPT was. So we actually started out with um, uh, GPT Neo. Anyone knows about that model? It's basically a GPT 2 ish equivalent, completely open source. You can run it on your own laptop. So the very first attempt we did was, um, was something like this. So give it a prompt, Carver and Ani, similar to answer what it says, right? Sample answer, and then you could just count the frequency of different brands mentioned next to it. Um, so this is uh, our, our, one of our very first data sets we got. 
immediately you can see that there's a problem. One of the problems is that uh, I changed the format of the slide, and uh, that little blue uh, uh, red box shifted a little bit, but it's supposed to be around Ford. One of the problems is that you know, just, uh, there's, there's a lot of mentions of Ford in general. So obviously there's a baseline problem. So there's a lot, a lot of tinkering that we have to do. It's, uh, it's really not an out-of-the-box solution. <coughs> But, but you can get around it. Um, now, of course, with these neural language models that are very fancy, you can ask them directly the exact same question. Of course, you, you have to like really tell them that you want the number, uh, emphasize it, uh, otherwise it doesn't give you a number. But uh, this prompt, uh, after some experimentation, seemed to work well. So it actually gives you a number. Um, you know, with the humans, you just have to ask, uh, doing zero to 10, how similar are they now? Here with the GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 implementations of chat GPT, you have to, you have to use this. Um, so this. So this is the summary of uh, the different data sets that we collected. So since we started out with the open-ended, uh, because that was the only option in the beginning for the AI, um, we wanted to see how the humans do on an open-ended prompt versus a direct uh, Likert scale. So the, the open ended prop views is exactly the same. Just complete this sentence, the car brand Audi is similar to, and then see what they say. Uh, and they, have, they do mention car brand, so that's nice. Uh, of course, uh, GPT goes on and on and on and uh, labors for as many pages as you let it. A uh, human will usually just give you a, a word or two. Um, and now, we kind of, the, the newer language models, they of course can do the direct. Uh, rating, numerical ratings, so we do, we do this two by two comparison. Now, of course, I have to note that this is not a really fair comparison between the two AI methods because this one is a much smaller and older language model. Uh, but because it's cheaper, we could do this frequency analysis, we could do the counting. With uh, GPT 4, it would be very expensive to do the exact same exercise. I'm sure it would work better. Uh, but this is not a completely fair comparison. Of course, between the humans, it's, it's the same time, same uh, study, so not uh, the exact same respondents, but, but very similar ones. Um, so this is just an example of what the responses would be. These are actual responses. Um, and you can see that we selected, for the sake of presentation, responses that match exactly. Um, now, here, here are the results. So first of all, just a perceptual map which is not you know, very meaningful in a scientific way, but they look very similar. So this is for the open-ended uh, between the machine and the human, AI and human. Um, so smallish differences, um, also a little bit different from the numerical, but they, they do match pretty well. Now, to do a little bit more of a scientific comparison, we developed a so-called triplet method, um, which really takes care of any of these uh, baseline and scaling and all kinds of effects. We only look at orders. For the, for the maps, also it's the case that we, look, we use ordinal embeddings, so only the orders matter. So the triplet method is, is uh, super simple. We just look at triplets of brands, and then we look at whether Audi is more similar to Mercedes or BMW. And for every triplet, we do this, and then between two different data sets, we compare whether these triplets are in the same direction or in a different direction. And that readily gives you a percentage match between each pair of data set. And this is really just a four by four, but uh, you use a bar chart. Um, so what you can see here is uh, this is GPT-4, aka um, uh, direct rating AI and comparing it against uh, the different uh, other different data sets. So we compare it against uh, not itself but everything else. So versus the open ended uh, AI versus the open ended human and versus the direct rating. Um, so you can see that obviously GPT 4 performs the best, but you can also see that the direct rating matches. <coughs> matches the human direct more than the open-ended human. And the open-ended AI actually matches the open-ended human a little bit better. Again, the state of the art is really this bar, which is really approaching 94%. So 
94% of triplets are in the same direction between the direct human reading and the GPT-4 direct numerical question. Um, and then we, we also can do some significance analysis here. So since everything is, there's variance in everything, humans are different, so we get different answers. AI is random, so uh, there's variation. We can do bootstrapping and we can do uh, uh, confidence and we, we see that, they, for example, this one is significantly better than, than that. All right, so again, this is kind of the main, the main result, and then everything else is just uh, an add-on. Um, so um, problematic brands, right? Not all brands are equal. Can we tell which brands are problematic? And it's really interesting if we can tell which brands are problematic without using human data, right? Because if our goal is to show that this is a standalone AI tool, then uh, we should be able to tell based on just the AI data. Uh, so what we did here is we, we, we tried to remove each brand one by one and see how the match improves. So that would be the, uh, the bottom one here. This is the open node, I believe. Um, and then we look at different brands. Um, so unsurprisingly, Renault is the worst because we had, uh, you know, U.S. Canada respondents, and also GPT is very much not yet French focused. And nobody knows what Renault is in the U.S. Uh, but but the interesting part is that the top uses only the AI data, and that happens to be the worst, so the higher the number, the worse here, because if you remove it, uh, you get a higher uh, match or higher self-consistency. So just based on the AI data, we can tell that Rondo is the worst. And then it's, it's ordered by self-consistency, but you can see that if we regress on this uh, yellow line, uh, then we get a negative slope. So you can basically tell which are the worst spread just by looking at how inconsistent the AI uh, responses are. All right, uh, prompt selection. So prompt selection, uh, we did uh, a little bit of uh, comparison with different ones. Uh, turns out that this RTF one worked out the best. Uh, even, and and uh, kind of making it longer and combining all of it makes it worse. So you really have to kind of, uh, uh, kind of mess, mess, mess around with the different prompts. Um, the differences are not huge, but uh, regardless, the, the prompts uh, matter quite a bit. Um, now, another thing we did here, it's debatable what is the ground truth of perceptual math. Some would argue that it's the human survey because it's perceptions, right? But you know, humans don't know what they think, so uh, maybe there's another way to look at what humans think by observing some kind of behavior. Uh, of, of theirs, um, and this is a, a pretty well-known data set used in other papers. We obtained it as well. It's a core trading data set. So we look at what brands are traded in for which other brands, and this is a very natural way to create you know, similarity metrics. Uh, so we did this, and um, first of all, we showed that both the serve human survey data and both the AI data are matching very well. But another interesting additional analysis we could do here is timing, right? Because we have years associated with these trade-ins. So we can not only look at all aggregate data, but we could also look at how our current AI data, current human data matches the trading data for different years. And it's very nice that it works out that the more you go back in the past, the less it matches for pretty much everything. Now, here comes one of the big advantages of the AI type market research is you can just easily put that year in the prompt, right? With a human, it's hard to say that. Like, imagine it's 1999, huh? <laughs> what do you think you can be? Um, or imagine that you're allergic to peanuts. How do you think about eating the walnuts, right? Um, but with AI, you can totally do that. And what we find that it, it works. So we, it's, it's significantly better than without the year, if we specify the year. So we just did it for a couple of years. So 
I don't have time to explain what exactly the, the distributions are, but it's a better match if you put the year in the AI prompt, the AI result are a better match with the actual training data in that given year. Um, how much time do I have? So this is just really skipping over the other big way of creating perceptual maps is not based on similarity, but using factor analysis with lots of attributes, and then um, narrowing down those to factors. Uh, you could do you could learn the exact same analysis with that as well. I mean, it's a little bit different techniques, uh, but you can do that, and uh, it works in the sense that the maps are similar, and we identify very similar uh, kind of factors. Uh, but it's because it's kind of a richer uh, representation, uh, the match is a little bit lower than just based on similarity. And the last thing I wanted to mention here is, kind of relates to putting the years in the prompt. How about demographics? Uh, that's one of the big challenges in market research. It's very hard to get a uh, survey from certain demographics, like high income, uh, very kind of well-defined demographics. But again, you can easily put that in the prompt. Here's an example prompt, young and wealthy male's favorite car brand is, dot, dot, dot. Um, now, here's something that uh, was kind of reassuring. I always used to teach in my marketing class that perceptions, how similar the brands are perceived, does not depend on the demographics. We did come from that. It does not. Survey, AI, it's all the same. So that's good. So for us to find some differences, we actually switch just for this uh, one to preferences, favorite car brands, which should definitely depend on the graphics. And what we do here is we, we kind of uh, group the brands into expensive sport families, so as it just create three groups of brands, and then we have three different uh, demographic variables that we can observe in the human data, age, income, and uh, Gender, we do a 50-50 split for all of them. And then we look at whether each of these affects their preferences. Um, and then we run the regressions, whether there's a positive or negative effect or insignificant. And the different colors show the positive, negative, and the insignificant. And it turns out that it's exactly the same. So wherever we find a significant effect for the AI data, we find the exact same significant effect for the human data. Uh, so this is really reassuring. Uh, of course, we will never know if like a very, very detailed demographic definition in the AI, it will give you some result, but if, it's, if you cannot observe that in the, in the human data, so you'll never know if it matches, but it's reassuring that with these simple ones uh, they match. All right, so uh, quick conclusion. Um, our main goal was just to show that this is this is not completely crazy, that it works pretty well, and then it's actually working um, much better, especially with the newer, newer tools than, than, ex than expected. You can do it similarity-based, uh, attribute-based, uh, and then, of course, you can incorporate demographics time. But I, I, I would be really uh, excited about, in terms of um, as a, in pra practically, is context. Like, imagine it's the morning and you're very hungry, how do you think about taking public transportation or something like that? Right? I think it's still available based on the results. Mm -hmm. Of course, limitations, uh, it's, it's not quick. It, it does take time to get uh, that, that AI data. The GPT-4, it's actually not cheap uh, with uh, gpt Mail, It's just uh, a lot of time. Um, comparisons between the human data and the AI data are actually fairly tricky. So we have to spend a lot of time in the triplet method and all that. Uh, prompts do matter um, to varying extents. And then of course, uh, it's very important to kind of know that not all brands are created equal. And then of course, these are car brands. We tried for, for other categories. Cars did work the best. Uh, results were not too bad for other, other categories either. But, but if you are in a less well-known um, industry, you might need to add your own data. Like you can, you can throw in your forum data or whatever, any, any proprietary data or any data that might not be for uh, front and center for language.